So I've spent the last 22 years in the staffing industry with one organization. They were amazing. I advanced my career about every three years. Um, but at the pinnacle of my career, you know, you begin to realize you're in a male-dominated organization for leadership. And even though we had tons of women at the market level and supporting our business, at the leadership level, often I was the only female in the room. So I can remember many meetings that I walked out where I knew I shared great ideas. And those ideas may have not you know, developed legs or taken off in the meeting. And I would find myself finding a male sponsor and saying, hey, did you think about my idea? Here's what we could do. Could you take this to the next level? Maybe bring it to the next uh, meeting. And there were many times um, at the later ex executive level of my career that I had male colleagues that I would get to sponsor my ideas and they would advance those as their own. They would take legs and they would take off. And I think like a lot of women, I began to think that was, that was normal. I would actually celebrate when the ideas took off and they were successful, um, not bothered by the, by the fact that it had to be sponsored by a male colleague. Um, and so I think that's what makes this uh, journey for me with Women Impact Tech so personal, having ex experienced that in an industry that's heavily dominated by men. Um, I recognize that our statistics are so challenging for women in tech. Less than 25% of the roles are, you know, women, led by women. And then when you get to advanced leadership roles, it's an even smaller percentage. So that helps me, you know, really take the journey with them, help them give guidance in what to do to make sure their voice is heard in the room, not to settle and to break the bias. It's not okay to find a male sponsor, but to continue to lean in and bring your ideas forward as your own. Um, and the more that we do that as female leaders and we go out and lean in um, to continue to have a voice at the table, that's when our voice will be heard. I had the, the privilege of always working in diversity in my corporate career for the last 20 years, mostly around supplier diversity, but it carries over. Um, at the company I worked with before, we had a great mission to ensure that the board was representative of 50% women and 50% men. And I, at first I was really trying to understand, we were one of the first in our industry trying to do that and accomplish it. But what was very clear as we began to expand that board membership is having a team, whether it's your board or your executive team, that mirrors the market, meaning we need 50% women and 50% men, that is what our market looks like. So you have better transition of thought, innovation, you can have a lens from multiple angles that you really understand the market and who you're selling to that's representative of all what our U.S. population is made of. So that diverse thought and leadership and ensuring that all people are having an opportunity in your company and that all people are representative when you're taking a product to market it's invaluable to a company. It makes them much better and more profitable when they bring diverse ideas and create a culture where that diversity is embraced and celebrated.